Today we're talking about punch recording in Pro Tools, and we'll get to it all after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash the like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to when I have videos coming out. So without further ado, today, as mentioned, we are talking about punch recording within Pro Tools. So before we get to that topic, I do wanna mention in the top right corner, I have a link popping up to my Pro Tools training playlist. So this playlist is full of Pro Tools videos ranging from beginner to advanced. They're gonna help you get great at using this industry standard DAW. So definitely check out this playlist after this video. So that being said, let's get further into today's topic. And we're gonna start looking at the first of two ways you can use punch recording, which is manually. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools and we're gonna be discussing manual punch recording first. So the scenario where you would use manual punch recording is when you're recording another artist or another person, you would not want to use this on yourself because likely you are recording yourself away from your computer, maybe in a vocal booth or such. Um, so in all scenarios of punch recording, you need to have your transport popped up here, and that's this window here that I'm moving around. And to get this window open, on a PC, the keyboard shortcut is Control Numeric 1. On a Mac, it is Command Numeric 1. Um, if you don't want to use keyboard shortcuts, you can go up to the Windows tab at the top here, where my mouse is at, click that, and go down to Transport, and that will launch this window here. Now, for manual punch recording, really the only thing we care about in this Transport window is the Record button right here. So if we right-click on this, we want to go down to Quick Punch and enable that. Now, I at least want to mention Track Punch and Destructive Punch, even though we're not going to discuss them in this tutorial. They're only available in Pro Tools Ultimate, and they have a few extra features, and Track Punch actually requires some extra setup. So honestly though, really Quick Punch will get you everywhere you need to go. So don't even really worry about these, okay? So make sure you have Quick Punch selected here. And again, if you don't even have Pro Tools Ultimate, you won't have these available. So select Quick Punch. After that's selected, all you have to do, literally, is use Numeric 3 on your keyboard, Again, numeric three would be like your keyboard on the right-hand side of your keyboard, okay? Those keys over there, not the three across the top, okay? Just wanna get that out of the way. So it's on the right-hand side of your keyboard. And that's gonna allow you to punch in and out, all right, for recording. Now, you have to record enable all of the tracks that you want to punch in and out of. All right, so in my case, I just have one track here, okay? I just have this Vox track in which I'm counting to four. You can actually see the waveforms here. So I got one, two, three, and four. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna replace three here, okay? So we're gonna punch in and out on three. So I have to record and enable the Vox track here. So I'm actually gonna mute it here because you're gonna get some echo because I'm using the same microphone here. So I'm gonna mute it. And now I'm gonna record and enable it. Okay, so now you can see there's some level coming in now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start back here. I'm kinda just gonna visually do it here as opposed to listening. So I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna use numeric three to punch in and out, okay? So here we go. Three. And there you go, it's that simple to punch in and out, okay? That's what you would wanna do if you're recording somebody else and you're like the engineer, okay? So the next scenario we're gonna do is when you are recording yourself and you don't have this luxury of being able to control it via the keyboard here and you need to automatically set it up to punch in and out for you, okay? So our next scenario is automatic punch recording. All right, so automatic punch recording has a few extra parameters as opposed to manual punch recording. So going down to our transport here, we do also have to have quick punch enabled. Again, that is just right click on the record button here and going down to quick punch. 
Now we need to have a start and end point. So again, the start point would be our punch in point and the end would be our punch out point. Now you see we have start and end right here. We don't have to set the points right here. We can simply just highlight on our timeline like that, okay? So if I was going to punch in and out for the number three here, I would probably start just right before it here and probably go right to before four starts. So that's where I'd probably do my punch in and out. Again, I'm kind of working on the grid here. Um, now, a good thing to have for this would be pre-roll. It's actually a must. You need to have pre-roll because you need to give yourself some time and some playback before it actually punches in. So as you can see down here, we have pre-roll. So I'm gonna enable this. Now, this is measures here in beats and bars. So the first is measures. So I like to just give myself about two measures at least. So we'll do two for here. And it's also nice to actually have a little bit of post-roll so I'm gonna enable this here. Now you don't need a ton, but it's nice to have some kind of play after the punch out stops instead of just kind of stopping right when you're done, all right? So once you have these enabled and set the way you like them, you're pretty much ready to go. So again, we have to record and enable our track here. And if you guys missed the uh, first half of the video here, I'm just leaving this muted because I'm using the same microphone. You're gonna get some loopback audio, which you guys don't, obviously don't wanna hear that. Um, so now all I have to do is just hit record and it's going to take care of it for me. Now you don't have to put your cursor anywhere because it's going to start playing based upon the pre-roll and where your actual punch in start point is. Okay. So, uh, let's actually try this out here and I'm going to record the number three. All right, here we go. Three. Cool. All right. There you go. That's how simple it was. So we had our two measures of pre-roll before, and then it just started recording where our punch in point was set. It stopped recording where our punch out point was set, and then it continued to play on for our post-roll time here. Okay. So very automatic, very simple. So if you guys are, you know, recording in a vocal booth away from your computer, this is what you need to have set up here. So you can set up loop recording too um, to make this uh, essentially make a bunch of different takes and you're gonna get a bunch of playlists in here where you can actually then have a bunch of different takes to pick from, okay? So I have another tutorial on how to deal with vocal playlist, which is popping up in the top right corner now. So definitely check that out after this video. However, that is all you really need to know about punch recording within Pro Tools. All right, so I hope you guys found this video helpful and I hope you guys end up liking it. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe so I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when new videos coming out. And if you guys enjoyed this topic, you guys might wanna check out my video on how to record and quantize MIDI within Pro Tools. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.